And hello everybody and welcome to this month's extremely late Art Snacks video. As you've probably noticed, uh, this month there's not going to be any face cam because it's been like impossibly hot this summer. And it is hot right now, plus I have a little bit of an issue with my eyes so I don't want to wear any makeup. So you won't get to see my beautiful face in this video, but that's okay, you'll still get to enjoy my sultry voice. So here is this month's. You'll notice I hid the watercolor pans for now. You'll get to see them pretty soon. I didn't even unwrap everything. We're going to do it as we go. I didn't even read the joke in advance, so... Here's what's on the menu for August. Why was the cap arrested? It was covering for the marker. <laughs> I love these jokes so much you have no idea. <laughs> I really do. I really, really do. Uh, I think that's the Kuritake. It's hard to say because I... Oh, yeah, there we go. I do read English, however. <laughs> the uh, Kuritake Nihon Date Kabura Fude. Brush pen number 55, 7 dollars retail. And now watch me as I struggle to open this while I read the card. Oh, it has a little uh, toothbrush opening right here, so that's going to be useful. Um, staff favorite. Although traditionally used for Japanese calligraphy, Fude brush pens are great tools for all artists. The Kuritake Nihon Date Kabura Fude brush pen number 55. Ooh, say that three times real fast. Pronounced Nihon Date Kabura, well, I had it right, apparently, <laughs> is a double-sided pen with a firm fine point on one end, which I assume, yeah, it's this one, I think. Looks firm and fine. And a flexible rubber brush tip on the other. Oh, yeah, there we go. That looks a lot like my Pilot brush pen that I like a lot. So I'm looking forward to see if this is going to work as well. Because if it is, I'm going to grab me a couple more of that. Because you guys know, I'm a hoe for Kuretake. I love their products. Plus, this one is much bigger and not that much more expensive than my Pilot brush pen. And it has two nibs. So, like the best of every single world. The soft brush tip is extremely flexible, making it easy to create thick or thin strokes. While the fine tip is stiffer, allowing for greater control, filled with water-based dye ink, this pen is water-soluble. So it has everything for itself. Doink. No? Hang on. I'm trying to cheat with some glue. There we go, it worked. I'm going to skip this for now, and I'm going to go straight for the Robert Simmons Watercolor Brush Round Size 1, $7.99 retail, new product. Yet another round brush pen. But I'm not really complaining because I I know it's just the glue, but I really like the point on this one right there. Can we see? Ah, there we go. Yeah, all nice. Because my other ones, even if they're round, they've been like frankly round, and this one is kind of more pointier. So that's going to be fun. Uh, pair your watercolors with a reliable watercolor brush. The Robert Simmons watercolor brush features a unique blend of high quality synthetic filaments made to imitate natural red sable hair. The bristles hold pigment well while also retaining their shape stroke after stroke. You can never have too many brushes, especially when you work on a lot of wet media like I do. A limited edition, that must be the this one right here. The Art Snack X Dixon Ticonderoga, or Ticonderoga as far as I know. Number 2 pencil, 69 cents retail, limited edition, Art Snacks exclusive. Uh, I believe, yep. Yeah. That's what makes it an Art Snacks excuse exclusive right there. So now we know if I ever use this pencil regularly, I'm going to stop right here and never use it again. <laughs> the world's best pencil just got even better. Oh, we're going to see about that. Introducing an Art Snacks twist on the classic Ticonderoga number no. 2 pencil, known for its distinctive green and yellow ferrule. This is the ferrule. Well, in French it's ferrule. So I'm not sure how to pronounce it in English, but that's what they're talking about. This pencil features an exclusive graphite core formula that delivers an extra smooth performance. The latex-free eraser also provides easy, clean correction. It does 
feels softer than a usual number two pencil eraser who usually feel pretty dry by the time I get to them so we're at least going to try it out a little bit but I'm probably mostly going to be using this guy while I work <laughs> and finally well finally for now because as we know I kept this for last for a reason the bonus item, the L'Aquarelle Canson Heritage Watercolor Paper. Right there, Canson. They had me at Canson. I also love Canson paper. Canson and uh, what's the brand of this one? Well, my uh, large co comic paper, when I actually use it, <laughs> is a Canson fanboy. And uh, so I already know this is going to be good quality. Try out your new art supplies with three bonus sheets. One, two, three of cold press l'aquarelle canson heritage watercolor paper this heavy 300 gsm 100 percent cotton paper is strong and absorbent offering excellent color lay down and ultra sharp brush strokes experience precise control as f color flows smoothly from your brush to paper if you enjoy this paper full-size pads are available for purchase in the art snacks shop we'll see we'll see we'll see because even if i use a lot of wet media i tend to aim more towards mixed media paper than watercolor. Mixed media tend to be smoother and I'm able to use more, well, as the name implies, more media on it than just watercolor. As usual, I'm noticing, I don't know if you'll be able to see it on camera, there's a slight texture difference from each side. Like the texture looks more tight on this end than on this end. Texture is well, more textury, I would say, on this side. On this side, it's like it's tighter. So, now, flip that around and flip those around. You guys know that there tends to be like an inside joke when I receive art snack supplies. <laughs> if you've been following right up until now, you'll know that they have a tendency... <laughs> to send me blue and purple supplies. Now lately, they've changed it up a little bit. They sent me some red supplies and I was happy. Sometimes some red and blue and I was still happy. They sent me... I'm gonna take the glue off. They sent me... some purple. Some purple, some red purple, and some pink purple. <laughs> Literally, it says cobalt violet hue, permanent mauve, purple lake, quinacridone magenta, which is a purple pink. They sent me four different shades of purple, long story short, and I find this hilarious. <laughs> Just gonna put this here so you guys can take a little look at it while I read the description. Because after that, I'm going to need a lot of hands to be able to unwrap them, and I don't want to unwrap them right now. So I can still label them before I start to work, or else, right here, I'm going to be lost. <laughs> here, there's like a slight difference. The purple lake is slightly darker than the Queen Acridone. <laughs> but here, there's no way to tell from the clean pants. <laughs> These are Dale Rowney Aquafine Watercolor Half Pan Twin Set, $6.99 retail each. Complement your artwork with Dale Rowney Aquafine Watercolors. Made from a selection of modern, high quality pigments, this watercolor paint features rich, free flowing, transparent colors. Each pack contains two carefully selected half pans from the same color palette, you don't say. Letting you mix and create beautiful, complementary shades. Complementary. Mm hmm. <laughs> so that's that for this and then of course there's the beautiful little minty sticker which I don't know if I'll be able to show on camera I don't know if you guys can see I hope so I'll only know after I'm done it matches my hair currently and that is absolutely adorable and this month's candy is a little dum-dum uh, which uh, lemon lime dum dum, seven up flavored dum dum. <laughs> so that's gonna be nice. It's a consider my hands are small, so it's a little small of a dum dum, but still, it's nice that they always include a candy. 
So that is it for the description. It is now time to test. I'll see you guys in a little bit. And we're back. As you can see, this time I did garnet because that's all I could think about with the colors I had. <laughs> I would like to say that she's my favorite crystal gem, but they're pretty much all my favorite crystal gems, so that wouldn't be too fair. So, as far as watercolors go, this paper gives some delightful effects. As usual, I use my wet on dry technique because I don't really like working on wet canvas and as you can see as far as blending goes it's really pretty for those of you who like like hard blending like I do when using watercolors it lifts okay when using a lot of water on it and uh, as promised it's it is indeed highly pigmented look at the subtle shadow I put on her lips and on her nose I love it colors themselves Hang on. There we go. Colors themselves, I kind of had to write it down directly on the pans because it's not written anywhere. And then again, I think I mixed up the cobalt violet and the permanent mauve because to me, mauve is usually the paler shade. But as you can see, beautiful, beautiful colors. There's, how can I say that? There's no grain in it. As in, the mixability is really good. There's no real flaw to the paint itself. It applies on smooth, and where it's not smooth, that is from me. The uh, Kurutake pen, as expected, this works exactly like my pilot pen, so I was very happy about that. Uh, when they say that this, this sharp nib is stiff, they're not kidding. Uh, I had to actually wear it down a little bit, on uh, well wear it down what I mean is I, w I decided to write the names on this using this at least to get it started and because it was pretty stiff I don't know if you guys can see it kind of flicked ink a little bit everywhere around the name and it took a little while before it settled down so I wouldn't recommend using this on watercolor paper it's uh, we're gonna see that right away as soon as I grab it. Got my little uh, garnet reference up here. Yeah, it's much smoother on smooth paper. Gonna try with this. Oh yeah, much smoother, much better. It's kind of hard really to pick a correct pen to work on watercolor because of the texture. So I'm happy to say that I'm probably going to order a couple more of these ones. Because as you can also see, at least here, it's a beautiful deep black with very little marking. And because it's a more rubbery tip than a fibrous tip, it's not likely to fudge and muss 
like some of my other brush pens that I'm not going to mention for once. <laughs> the pencil. Uh, I did my best and I used the original eraser. As you can see, it's a little worn, up, worn down, I should say. It's erasing pretty well without really touching the paint, which surprised me. So I don't know if it's because the eraser itself is super gentle or because the paint itself is very resistant. It erased pretty good where I actually bothered to erase. Of course, it's not going to be perfect because there is paint on top of the pencil. The pencil itself, as you can see, I decided to use my uh, Art Snacks Cum Eraser, Eraser, Sharpener. Use the real words, Sharon. <coughs> Great, and now I'm choking to death <coughs> to give it a much better point than the one that was provided fresh out of the box. Beautiful, sharp, pale lines, pale for an HB, but that is okay. That was what we were going for when doing the under sketch because otherwise, it's a pretty normal HB. Nice solid graphite as I draw. I can make some thin pale lines and I can make some hard lines. I did not feel something, a lead that was too soft or any graininess. So that's a pretty lovely quality pencil right here. Little disappointed with the brush this time. The reason is I actually made an effort this time with my watercolor and I took several breaks to let the paint dry in between applications and I still managed to get a little but that was that's my fault that's my fault however as I was painting with the brush I noticed it instead of keeping its point right now it's dry so it's normal that it's like this there but wet while i was working with the brush instead of keeping its one point it decided to split in two to three points which made it difficult to fill in some areas after a while and a good brush should not do that like this is fresh out of the box i even took out took off the presentation glue like i call it with water like you're supposed to do instead of moving the bristles until it breaks down by itself and like I did everything right and the the bristles still split up in several points so not too too happy with that it's supposed to be high quality or at least medium quality good quality brushes should not do that so that's not a recommendation this is for normal illustration, maybe calligraphy, like it says on the paper. This is lovely. This is lovely. And these are lovely. So what's that? Like four out of five? Three out of four? Other than that, it basically allowed me to make a beautiful drawing. And even if it's mostly purple, that's okay. I love running gags. And I'm still able to think up some stuff. I know I'm not original with only fan art, but I love fan art. I like to draw what I like to draw, and that's it, and that's all. And if you don't like it, well, just go to another channel, and that's the best I can tell you. Of course, if you have suggestions, you're more than free to put anything down, because during the month, sometimes I also get the uh, Copic Color Challenge, and usually I take requests for what to draw with the colors I have. Usually I do that on Facebook, but I'm thinking that next time, well, next month, I should say, I'm going to try that on Instagram. And of course, all the links will be in the description. So all in all, a pretty good box this month. I'm always a fan of getting a lot of paint. And even if I didn't get a lot of colors, I still got a lot of hues. So that's close enough. That's close enough. And I got to draw one of my favorite characters, Garnet from uh, Steven Universe. And once again, I apologize for the video to be for being super late. It's super hot and I can't even stand myself right now. So I'm probably going to go get a tall iced tea after I finish filming this. So I can sip it nicely and gently while editing. And I'll see you guys in about two weeks, two weeks roughly by now. <laughs>
for the September box and maybe even the next month's uh, Copic Colors if you go on my Instagram. So I love you guys and I'll see you guys next time. Don't forget to like, comment. If you're not subscribed, subscribe and push on that little bell to get notification. I'll see you guys next time. I love you all. Mwah. Goodbye.